Did you really think I was going to end it like that, the ending? Encore. Encore indeed. And, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time zone you're in. This is not a walkthrough. This is not a playthrough. We are officially at the No Street Roads Verdict video. Let's get reviewing. Ah. Well, I guess it's basically... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, I'm on a different console compared to the other one. Which is fine, because I'm not going to play it again. As much as I love the music. As much as I love the music. Oh, man. As much as I love the music. Sorry, we're going to actually turn the volume down on the game. Okay, so we're going to turn the volume down on the game. I think that's a pretty good volume for the game to it was quite a rock a talk ride. It was. It really was. It really was. Okay, so as I always do in my verdict videos, uh, of course, leave a like, comment, or subscribe. Let's just get that out of the way. But we're going to talk about the negative first, as I always do for all my game verdicts. Then we're going to talk about the positive. So the negative, let's just jump right to it. Let's rock a talk. I wasn't actually thrilled about the the hack and slash gameplay. When it was the hack and slash gameplay... Alright, hold on. I gotta get the music down. Because I won't be able to hear myself... I won't be able to hear myself talk, and I'll be too busy of like, Oh, dude! I'm gonna turn off the music. Because that's what... Darn it, I'm getting distracted by the music. Anyway. So... The final score out of 10 for this, and people might actually disagree with me because they think it deserves a 7. And arguably, I, I wouldn't disagree too. I feel like this game earned a 7, and it could have been an 8, but I don't think it earned a 6 or anything lower than that. But I don't think it deserves a 10. So I think that's a hit. Well, I'm going to give it. I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. You heard me, 9 out of 10. Come on, bring out your fifth port. Uh, sorry. Bring out your pitchforks, your torches, and I'll explain why I'm giving this a 9 out of 10. This is going to be kind of like the black sheep of... This is not going to be everyone's cup of tea. I already know this. I already know this. This is a game made for me. But 9 out of 10. Okay, the negative, like I was saying, the gameplay, when I was playing it, it was nothing too thrilling. And, you know, being a video game, you have to have fun, unique gameplay. Even if your game is not fun, if you have unique gameplay that makes you capacity like more than five hours, you're doing a great job. But I will admit, when the gameplay wasn't focused on the rhythm base, when we're just doing hack and slash to the enemy variety, which I'm not going to ding it for that, I'm going to ding it for the gameplay. We've seen it before in multiple hack and slash, like Devil May Cry is the best example of hack and slash done right. Same as God of War and Bayonetta, but sadly, No Straight Roads and turns of their hack and slash, it's just not great. It's, it's terrible. 
or it's not terrible it's just too simplistic and you just hit like the square button and one button and that's it i kind of wish they added maybe square triangle and made some other mechanics for their gameplay but no i wasn't really impressed with the gameplay when it wasn't rhythm based or was it involving the boss fight I don't know, I just felt like that was kind of like a missed opportunity on the gameplay. Like for a rhythm-based game like this, for a rhythm-based like game like this, I feel like they should have made lean on the rhythm-based mechanics and implement it in the gameplay, and then I would have gave it still a 9, but I think the gameplay holds it back for a very fantastic game like this. So that's one of the things. And... I'm gonna probably mispronounce it, so I'm gonna mute myself so I can actually pronounce it right. Okay, thank you for bearing with me in that short pause. And I know the Xbox showcase just started too, so I won't take too much of your guys' time if you watch that or if you care about the Starfield Direct, which I'll wait till the live stream it ends and then I'll check out the trailers I really want to check out. But we really got the trailers for the Summer Game Fest starting out with Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, and that's besides the point. Let's get back to the bridge. Okay, so another negative about No Straight Roads was Vinyl City. Nothing wrong with Vinyl City. I think its presentation was perfect for what we got. But when you compare it to kind of just a game like this to other games, Vinyl City is kind of hollow and empty. Nothing against it, but besides Vinyl City, you, you're really there just to kind of like explore the town, but to get like energy charges and power up the city. But... Apart from that, there's not really any collectibles worth investigating. It, you get to talk to characters, and they're all done very extremely well across the board, but it's really the boss characters and Mayday and Zoop. But when you're talking about Vital City, there's really nothing there. I spent pretty much a good five to six hours going between bosses, but No Straight Roads is kind of like Fury. It's a boss rush. You have beautiful locales, but... There's really nothing in Vital City. It's pretty to look at, but there's really nothing there to, to catch your eye. I'm just saying, that's kind of a missed opportunity also. I felt like they could have really leaned into the kind of musical instrument presentation, which they definitely saved the budget for the boss fights, but not the actual city. In fact, I barely remember any characters from Vinyl City, except for like the officer, Odyssey, and other characters I saw multiple or import integral to the main plot. Other than that, I didn't really give a crap about Vinyl City. I will admit that. So those are the two negatives I will say that held it back from a 10. If maybe they fixed the... If they fixed Vinyl City made it more interesting, more organic, like Persona as an example, like just in its presentation and its characters, I probably would have gave it a 10, and if the gameplay kind of backed up its really presentation, brilliant presentation, I mean, we're going to an out of 10, but as it stands, it gets a 9 out of 10, and that's pretty generous, but now, let's talk about the positives. Okay, so the positives, and the story might not be your cup of tea, but it's mine. It is definitely mine. As a kid, as a kid, I grew up with BAM when I was, like, young, and so... Musical instruments have been part of my DNA since growing up. It, it's been it's been pretty much part of my DNA growing up. So when we have a story focused on pretty much musical instruments, the power of rock, and just diverse music, I feel like the story was perfect for what it was. It was a great start. 
And you know why the story's great? Because it's a it's emotional when it needs to be emotional. It's funny. It's a comedy. But it's a great comedy. It has a great balance of comedy, seriousness, emotional, and there's a point to it also. And it's I'm gonna talk about the characters, because that'll be a separate positive, but the story is great. It's 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 perfect. It's perfect for what it is. It started in a grand fashion, and I like how it started so awkwardly between Mayday and Zoo. I love how it started, and I like the things that we got sprinkled with. This is a un it's an underrated hidden gem that actually generally surprised me from the beginning to the end. Now, mind you, I will not disregard that there are some plot points that are just pretty freaking obvious. Like Tatiana being um, Faya, that was pretty obvious. Uh, pretty much Cliff being the villain, that was pretty obvious too. But what the, why the story works is even taking those plot points and you saw them come a mile away, it's the themes that do well. It's pretty much piece of, people do not play music just for just playing music to get fame. They play music because of family. They play music because it's a passion. They play music because it's a connection with people. I love how Tatiana summed it up to, towards the end. I that was it was so profound, but in a heartwarming way. Again, Tatiana is my fan favorite from this game, but that's what the story did well. Because it was smart, it started comical, and then really leaned into the serious and not darker, but the serious themes towards the end and the middle. It's really showed extremely well with Yunu, Evie, and. Not, not Evie. You, you know, Yuni, and. Oh man, I pronounce her name. I think it's uh, Yunu. I think it's Yunu? Crap, I must be mispronouncing it. But hers, and then Eve's, and Tatiana, it really shows. But I'm glad that the story didn't take itself too seriously, and there was a kind of like a, a breath of fresh air with its comedy. The comedy was funny, I, I will admit. So because of that, the story's just, it's so done well, no matter how over the top or comical it gets, but it reels it back when they really get serious. So, like I said, it's emotional when it needs to be, it's comical when it needs to be, it it nails the themes that they're trying to do. I like how it extremely ended, and I think that deserves its own positive, but the story is easy to understand, and you can get into it, too. Yeah, I think that pretty much does it well. I think that's one positive of, uh, of all the positives. But the other thing that does it well, too, is the characters. Without the characters, the story wouldn't hit and land as hard as it did in the ending. Mayday and Zoom are great central protagonists. They're great central protagonists. They're us, but they're done well. Pretty much having Mayday's positive, very infectious energy throughout the story, but then her maturity towards the end, is it just feels organic and felt earned. Her character development is done well. Same as Zoom. It's chill throughout the time, but when we get to see him kind of engaging and talking with Eve, it's one of the best scenes in the game besides Tatiana's scenes. Yeah, it, it's just basically... And then when we learn about Zoot's background with the rap battle with TK West, another fan favorite. But they're great central protagonists because they really show... They're great central lenses when they have their own personal... Worse. And Zook's kind of laid back, chill Demeter, who really thinks about what he's going to do next, is a breath of fresh air too. They complement Mayday and Zoo really complement each other as characters. For all, I was never annoyed by them, and I was really never annoyed by them. I I can't. I was trying to think of like, is one of them annoying? I'm like, no. Are both pretty much endearing, relatable, fun characters? Absolutely. And it doesn't, it's not just them. I would mention the side characters, but they're not worth mentioning too much. They feel like something that you would find in the Persona game. That's fair. The ones that really stuck out was the boss villains. And I know there is actually, if you beat the boss characters on like the hardest level or crazy levels, you get to learn a bit, a very good significant amount of their backstory. I will probably play this in between streaming, but if if they're worth showing, I will show them. 
but the boss characters are so fleshed out, they're not cookie cutter villains, and that was refreshing too. Because in these type of games, you'll get cookie cutter villains. It would have been easy for them, but no, they made the villains like real relatable people that were not boring. From pretty much DJ Sopatomic Supernova, I know I must have butchered his name and I probably mispronounced it or just got it wrong, from him to Tatiana, all the villains are fleshed out. They have basically great motivation, great personality quirks. I kind of wish we, if we see more villains like that in future games, that would be exciting. Because No Straight Rose kind of showed us that not all villains have to be cookie cutters. Sometimes they just gotta have the most simplistic motivations, but relatable and also enduring as the villains or as the heroes. Yeah, all the villains were all fleshed out very well. My, and if I have to say, like my favorite character is Tatiana. Tatiana was given the best lines. She was given the best lines. She was the best character, and she had the best character development. I like that. She basically started as kind of like that villain that you're gonna, you know, be a natural villain, but when you listen to her dialogue and then actually fight her for the fall fight, it makes you question the rock revolution that Zook and Mayday start. That's why she's fan favorite. And she has a past that I am actually impressed with. She was really one of the highlights about among a plethora of characters, the central characters, mind you. For No Straight Roads, she was kind of a highlight. She was the she was a fan favorite. I hope the and I'm gonna of course throw it in the characters because I think it's worth putting in the characters. The voice acting is excellent. It's not like Mass Effect, Red Dead Redemption, or specific games where they just have like perfect writing, perfect voice acting. I cannot see why you picking anybody up. But the actors and actresses, yes, they are of basically of different diverse culture of different or uh, diverse nationalities. You can tell that some of these actors are from different countries, multiple of them. But the highlights, whoever played the actress who or the actress who played Tatiana is the best. Like I said, no dialogue is wasted for her. No dialogue is wasted for her. I'm trying to think of like did she have cool of lines? Yes. Did she have like a cringeworthy lines? No. Along with her, DJ Subatomic had some great lines too, but that's what I mean. Even the main central protagonist, Mayday and Zook. You can definitely hear their accents, but I liked it. it I could not see anybody else voice in them. So I'm trying to say is the English dub for all of the actors and actresses for the characters are great across the board. Even Cliff, even though he's gonna sound generic towards the end, he had some pretty solid lines too that I was just like, this guy, I was like, give him more work. Especially Tatiana, give her more work. Everybody in the cast, give her more work. Yunu was kind of like, a little hard to come across, but it fit. Her voice fit too, but it wasn't as annoying as I thought it would be. So that's what I mean, the characters and the voice acting did it. And then, you know... What I also liked about the script too, it was self-aware. It was self-aware and it worked very well. And it kind of aligns with the story that it was basically... Oh man, the music's too fantastic. I'm trying not to lose my train of thought, but the music's fantastic. Anyway. So what I'm trying to say, the script was pretty much witty and very self-aware and it really hit the emotional notes when it really needed to go to serious tone. The script was pretty much by far on the light. It was very much of their light. As the characters were also a delight too. That was another positive. Okay, so I kind of like made the gameplay a negative, but what was a positive in terms of a little bit of the gameplay was Mayday in Zook's playstyle. I try to think, I was like, even though the gameplay is not great, the customizations with Mayday and Zook when we went to the skill tree is phenomenal because even though the gameplay lets me down the abilities that we get with Mayday and Zook from the fans which is the smart mechanic getting fans after the boss fight because you're hijacking and kind of outperforming the decision was the smart play I really would like I really enjoy their playstyle because the 
pretty much Zook's drumming mechanics of pretty much being reliant on combos, that's very smart. And Mayday being the brawler or the heavy attack that we're used to in most attack and slash was also smart. I feel like their playstyles were very distinctive, and if you play it with two players, if you play it with two players, it's pretty much freaking fun. I kind of really wish, and it's a missed opportunity, but I won't nick it for that, or I won't do a nitpick on this, but I kind of wish there was online co-op. I would have been interested to find out how this would have been on, on online co-op. As it stands, it's local co-op, but I think it fits very well. I think local co-op was the smart thing, but I really wish they did online co-op. I, I don't doubt really a lot of people are going to play this, sadly. But I could honestly say, if I was playing with co-op, then I'd give you my positive on that, but I played all single player, and it was still fantastic, as it is. So, another positive, well, we're, we can't not talk about the boss fights. The boss fights are just pretty much epic. They're... They're pretty much epic, legendary, and they're pretty much unique and creative, the boss fights. I haven't had, like, actual great boss fights since Fury. There are other boss fights, mind you, there have been other boss fights that have been fantastic, but... Yeah, this one, I highly enjoyed the boss fights, and I'll explain why. The musical presentation and the budget that they do for each boss fight, even from the very first one, are great across the board. There are just too many highlights, musical presentations, the music playing in the musical... Uh, let me recant that. The musical renditions that you put in the boss fights, the the presentations with the boss fights are all fantastic across the board. You don't know what you're going to expect next because all the boss fights are over the top appropriately. They're all over the top, great musical renditions, the personality quirks really shine with the boss fight. There's pretty much the locales that you do for the the boss fights are so uniquely artistic in a very satisfying way. And plus, the boss fights are challenging too to keep you on your toes. So if you let's just say go to a higher level, you're gonna get your teeth kicked in because they're appropriately challenging. And I like that they're challenging, even though the gameplay lets me down. The boss fights did it. I was always impressed with the boss fights, because I was like, what will they think of next? What will they think of next? Especially when we got to, like, Sayu, Jeffrey, DJ, Super Summatomic Supernova. This was a highlight. Tatiana's was also a highlight, too. But if I have to rank the boss fights, because now it's a very big video, but I can throw it in there. My favorite boss fight of this game, Tatiana. Tatiana... Obviously, and to kind of make it briefly so we can move on to the other positive things this footage video, Tatiana's worse because of the dialogue, the presentation, her music was pretty much epic tier, next level tier. I was actually astounded of how well her music was. The presentation was go too. Everything worked so well for that too, and I love how it ended too. Nothing was disappointed with that last fight. And then the second boss fight that I highly enjoy, and yes, I'm gonna break him, I'm gonna break him. You knew. You know because they took a familiar piece and just remixed it in the best way possible, but also the trauma and the emotional kind of like connection, and just that Malakandi end for Yunu. I, I loved her boss fight. You, she showed, that's kind of like show but don't tell method I love in video games when they do that. That was kind of one of them. They didn't have to show me... They didn't have to tell me what was going on. I could show... They showed us what was going on through his very lush and very effective gut punch opening, or gut punch level. Plus, using a musical note in rhythm with pretty much avoiding them with the rhythm, it was the best rhythm part ever. Tatiana only just wins because of the dialogue. But Yinu was another highlight of that, too. DK West was the third DK West. It might not be everyone's favorite level design, but DK West. Music, the lyrics, the dialogue when we actually got the dialogue, the pretty much the sick beats. Yeah, DK West. And DK West, compared to the other boss fights, was actually challenging. I was actually impressed of how challenging they were. DK West 
was my third favorite boss fight, appropriately. And then another one, pretty much if we rank it, then Eve, because of the dual personalities, and then the fact that you have to switch between two characters, especially if it was on co-op, perfect. I like the duality of just finding her on two sides. Did I use a lot of twos in her boss fight? Yes. I don't think her music was like strongest compared to the other bosses, but it was pretty great. It was it was great. To mind you, it was great music. And her character development and her character really shined in her level, especially her level. And then of course DJ Subatomic. You want to tie it with DJ Subatomic and pretty much Sayu because they had some sick beats, fantastic presentation, great visuals. Also dialogue that was great too, but not as great as not the honest. But they're great starter bosses. And of course Ten Ten. The only scene is the last boss fight, but in a great plethora of boss fights that I really enjoy, Ten Ten. But I think Tintin had the less impact compared to the other ones that I fought too. I think they were maybe the weakest, but like a strong weak. And that's all I have to say about the boss fights. I was trying to make them short, but you could tell how much I was enjoying a boss fight if I talked more in my commentary. Yeah, the boss fights are pretty much killer. Alright. Another positive, and of course we're listening to right now, the legendary fire music. The music's fantastic, from the opening to the intro, let's just say the intro, to the intro, to the opening music that we're listening to now, to the, all the way to the end, the music never let up, the music was fantastic, the music was always remixed, uh, the, the music was remixed, altered, and then any musical repetition when they went for the slower, serious moments, or when they went with the comical, the music was legendary. I knew the music was going to be fantastic by the time we are listening to the opening music. I knew we had something special. And that was, the, that was also a positive too. The music gelled well when it went to the gameplay, when it matched the rhythm of the beat. It was where the music really shines. It's Yunu. Yeah, definitely Yunu. Definitely DJ Silvertone. Definitely Tatiana. When basically when the level designs or the levels with the bosses wanted to go over the top, that's where the music really shines, especially with Yunu, Tatiana, DJ Subatomic, and the list goes on. It just shines. The music, it's its own character, and that's such a positive. I love that. I really love that the music is its own character, its own idea. And it, you can tell the developers were excited to do the music for this, and it really shows. And that's, in turn, makes the gamer excited to jam with the music, too. I only had a smile, a big smile, when I heard the opening music. And pretty much. Alright. Okay. Had to take a swig, because... Man, I've been talking for a while. Okay, another, and I think I'll make this the last positive because, no, no, next to last positive. And even though it doesn't have the best visuals, I think the visuals are great. Pretty much when they pretty much do anime, it, it's considered anime. When you really think about it, it's considered anime. But when they do the anime cutscenes, and then the Saturday, as me and my fiance were kind of briefly talking about this game, when they do kind of like a Saturday, uh, Saturday cartoon visuals that the most of the game, 95% of the game is in, it's done so seriously. I love, I like the anime cutscenes that we get because they're hilarious when we get them. But I really like the Saturday kind of Saturday morning cartoon look that they go for 95% of the game. I think it fits very well. It's clean, it's stylish, and it really enhances the presentation for the boss level and the presentation in general. But the anime cutscenes do not hurt it at all too. In fact, it makes it very well done. I like the anime cutscenes that they are doing because it really works for it. So what I'm saying is, the visuals, even though it's not the best looking artistic or Saturday morning cartoons I've compared to other games, 
I did it really well, well too. I think that's a big part of it. Really enhances the musical level one. And plus for the boss character, it really shines in like examples as E, yeah, E's boss fights, definitely Tatiana's. But those are just kind of like, it really makes the boss fights very unique. And that's what I like about those straight roles. When they do the Saturday Marty, it's easy to look at. It makes the boss fights more, like, really artistic. Even though it's not the best looking visuals, I think it worked very well for this game. Okay, and now the last positive, it was the ending. I think the ending did well because there was character development for the characters that we needed. So Mayday, pretty much you knew, Mayday and Zook, you knew, and Tatiana. I think why the ending works well well, and it actually it didn't make me tear up, but it made me kind of like, ah, oh, like a bittersweet smile. Because it fits so well. And I like that both characters Especially Mayday, they grew up. They just, they actually learned something. That's what was refreshing about the ending. They actually learned something. We do get endings where basically the hero lost somebody important, or the hero actually at the pretty much a coming of age story, like brothers. But this one was refreshing, even though no one died. Basically, Mayday and Zoop didn't mature greatly. They actually learned something about it. They're Action had consequences, which Mayday learned on the hard way. I like how mature Mayday was at the end. I, that's why I was really... I think she had some solid character development towards the end. Zook had some solid character development when it came to TK West, but I'm glad these characters learned something. Even Tatiana! You don't expect the villain to learn something. You don't expect a villain to see the error of their ways, but Tatiana did. That's why she's fan favorite. That's why she's the best character in the game. Because she learned something too. And she's going for the better. Plus the dialogue when it went for the comedy. It, it worked freaking well for it. So it's not just the characters maturing well. And the dialogue was perfect as well. And the characters actually learned something. Solid character development from one villain. But still. The, it was in a positive way too. Plus the music was Fantastic, the presentation was fantastic about it too. It was a solid walking ending, I'm gonna call it that on my part 10, as you guys probably see now. But it was a solid ending. It was a solid ending to me, and they don't need to change anything about it. If this is gonna be a one-off game, and I really hope it is a one-off game, there's nothing more you need to do with this game. Let it stop here. I think it's perfect as it is, I don't think it deserves a sequel. I don't want it to get a sequel. I think this is a one-off game that I want it to be one-off game. It just did so well with its characters and it ended so well with no really no loose ends. Sure, Cliff is still around, but him just kind of being sidelined and just kind of like he's gone, I can appreciate that. I guess you could say that's a plot hole, but it, it doesn't hurt it. It doesn't hurt the ending at all. I, I actually like how it ended. So yeah, I think that's why I'm giving this a 9 out of 10. I probably talked more for a game like this that should be considered indie. And let me face it, let's face it, this is not the best game. It's not. So you guys might be surprised of why I gave it a 9 out of 10, but that's why I gave it a 9 out of 10. I think the positive outweighed the negative. I know there's a negative of this game. And it, it, it does show. You can tell the developers did not put a lot of budget in the gameplay, and you can tell that they didn't put a lot of budget in the world. But, I don't want to know Straits Row 2. I think it ended perfectly, I think this is a fantastic game, I can recommend it. I just know no one's going to actually play it, because if you're not into rhythm-based game, or to hack and slash with the rhythm-based mechanics, this is not going to be your cup of tea, you're not going to probably like it, but I still recommend it just because it's worth playing it once, but there's not like a whole lot of replayability. But it's worth playing once, just because of the outlandish, over-the-top boss fights, great stories with great characters, what more do you want? So, that's pretty much it. So, what's going to be the schedule for today is going to be John Wick Hex. We're going to try to finish as much as we can, if we can finish it today, then cool. Then the next few games that we're going to actually be focusing on is going to be Horizon of the Victory. It's going to be Horizon Forbidden... Wait, not Forbidden. We're not doing it yet. 
uh, Horizon Zero Dawn Frozen Wilds. That's going to be one of the games. Then, of course, we're finally going to do Marvel Spider-Man Miles Morales because what the heck? Spider-Man 2 is coming out on October 20th, so I'm freaking excited. Um, the third game, it's kind of up in the air, but it's either going to be Elden Rain or Returnal. Because I think it's time to do Returnal. It's been a while since I did Returnal, and I want to get back to it. That's one of the games I highly, highly love, and I want to get back to it. But it's going to be either one of those two games. Depending on if there's not going to be a PlayStation Plus game that's going to be disappearing next month that I actually like. No Straight Roads was the game I was happy to finish, and I have now an open schedule. So now we're going to pick finish or focus on John Wick's hex so we can actually get that done, get the verdict video out, and then move on to the games I really want to move on to. Nothing against No Straight Roads or John Wick Hex, but I like those games definitely much better. So, of course guys, like I said at the beginning, leave a like, comment, or subscribe. I hope you guys enjoy No Straight Roads. What was your favorite No Straight Roads moment? Or is there a game that's similar to No Straight Roads that you can highly recommend and you can drop in the comments and I'll go ahead and read and we'll briefly discuss it. On that note, let's Ewa and stay tuned. Or Rock Attack and stay tuned.